Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here today. We are going to use code coverage to strategically identify areas of the code that need to be improved or just are left untested. Or maybe things we didn't even know had no coverage around them because they were isolated or maybe we just haven't got to them yet. Utilizing the existing coverage report, we're going to use that and then we're going to show the progress of improving that code coverage and show you kind of what that looks like and some of the strategies to tackle both the if-then statements as well as just general functions. So let's dive in. From our coverage report yesterday, we identified that all red areas indicate something that's not tested either directly like the role is, or indirectly, such as calculate equipment, which is used inside of the constructor. We're gonna tackle add equipment first, because there's really two things that this thing does. First, it adds anything that we add to it, a weapon or armor, to this equipment array. And secondly, it calculates equipment, if you do add armor, to increase or decrease the armor bonus based on whatever the properties of that armor is. So let's do something benign first. Let's verify that we can add a weapon to this equipment array and verify that the stateful change that it does is in fact still there. The good news is we already have fixtures created and ready to go. If I add a boomstick to my equipment in the array. So we have person A, let's create a boomstick. We'll say new weapon and the name is boomstick. The bonsu <laughs> or bonus is zero. The damage die amount is one. Let's do 12 so we don't confuse anything. How about that? Much better. So we have a boomstick. We've created a, a fixture in this particular test because we don't want to create it outside of these tests. We just want to use it for just this one. Person A, add equipment, boomstick. Then we'll verify it's actually inside the equipment array. Person A, equipment, should include our boomstick. Rerun our test. And we know that if we add our boomstick to an equipment, it's in the array. Fantastic. Just to clarify, we'll say equipment array. Now let's rerun our coverage, which will instrument those tests and show our coverage steadily increasing up in this higher 70s now, doing great. Instead of show coverage, it's already open. So we'll just refresh since it changes the HTML. Now you can see we now have this portion covered. Fantastic. So we got a good test that isolates this one part of this test. Second, we're gonna add another piece of equipment, but this time it's gonna be armor, and we're gonna verify that it does in fact increase the bonus. We've already got a test that increases if you add something to the equipment. There doesn't appear to be any logic to differentiate between those when adding things. So we can safely assume that if we add armor, it's probably already in the array. If you wanna add a test for that, wonderful. We're just gonna do it so we can verify that this if then statement is actually tackled. Or if you remember from our coverage here, are three out of eight covered if then statements up to four out of eight. So we'll say if I add hot pants to person A, he becomes awesome sauce and has an armor bonus of three. I don't know. Here it is. So this one's tricky because it's actually supposed to be two. And if we add one to it that adds a lot, then it'll suddenly magically be two plus whatever we added. So this one's gonna be tricky to test around the bug, but such is the life of adding unit tests after a code base. <laughs> Say, cons hot pants is new armor. Hot pants. And the bonus is one. So given that the default is supposed to be two with leather armor, and then we add some hot pants to it, then we can safely assume that person A, after we add the equipment, their armor bonus should magically, should magically equal three. We'll rerun our unit tests just to verify we're not wasting our time with coverage. Fantastic, it is in fact three. And we'll rerun our coverage. By the way, if you're curious how fast I do that, I just press up. Right, you cycle through your commands. You can do that in shell or here. All right, look at that. Hit the 50% mark. We've now got nothing but yellow, no more red. We're seeing the end of the lighted tunnel. So now we're going to re reload this. Voila, we now have two tests on these portions and one on this particular one. Now we've got this function pretty decently covered with just minor effort. That's how you improve your test coverage. You look at the red, you look at the pieces that you want to test, like the function, and then you tackle the if-then statements with separate tests to verify the top and the function as a whole works. If you have an if else, you have to tackle those separately, so that will take a third test and on down the line. Hope this is helpful.